The All Blacks 31 man squad for the Rugby World Cup is out and I'm going to discuss that right now. Welcome back to Skinny Brew Rugby guys. So the fourth and final big Southern Hemisphere side has been announced. Of course, that is the All Blacks. Uh, um, South Africa has been earlier this week, Argentina last week and up first was Australia. Um, if you want to see more international uh, content, please hit that subscribe button. I do appreciate it. Guys, and I have a great surprise for next week. I am talking to Kiwi YouTuber living up in Japan, in Biber, about the World Cup and what the teams can expect. Uh, tune in next week for that one, and I hope you enjoy it. Here we go, and let's get into that um, All Black squad. In the props, Hansen already shocked with the exclusion of 108 cap uh, prop Franks. He has been left out in favor of Lala, Moody, Molly, Ta'avao, and Tuunga Fasi. Molly, he has been preferred over Franks and he has yet to actually start a game for the All Blacks and it's actually huge for them. Um, if you think about a South African perspective uh, who picked Beast who has 110 caps, it's basically leaving out a guy like Beast and picking someone like Koboka in the team. Um, because what, what Hansen said is, how the game has evolved, there isn't really space for Franks anymore. The game really needs a versatile prop at the moment. And yeah, Franks has never been the most versatile player on the field, but his scrummaging has be, always been the mo this most solid of any guy on the field. But that's been in question of late, so I think that must be a reason that he has been dropped at the moment. In the hookers, Coles, Coltman and Taylor Coles, of course, he is probably edging uh, for that top spot as the number one choice hooker in the team. Just past Taylor at the moment, he's just a little bit better. And in Coltman, he would always have been there. Um, he would have always been in the team. He's just the goat of the team. Then Locks, Scott Barrett, Retallick, he is being risked actually to be picked. Uh, he's still coming back from injury, so I don't know if he is going to be in time for the World Cup. I think so if they do pick him or maybe he's just going to miss a week or two. Tupoluto, he really stepped up um, in the absence of Scott Barrett of course with his uh, suspension and then Retallick. And I've always been a huge fan of him so I think it's a good call to have him there as well. Of course he's the captain of the Blues as well and he's just very uh, experienced and a good leader in the side. Whitelock, he's one of the All Blacks's uh, three guys that are going for the treble this year so the treble of winning the World Cup for a third time in a row this means no Fafita or no Himopa in the side they will be on call probably but yeah with those other four guys in the side I would not have seen these two making the side anyway loose forwards this is where the All Blacks real depth lies Kane he is probably the next All Black captain so it's great to be, see him there and he had his a miraculous comeback after that neck injury he suffered last year and you should just think of the, the, the willpower of a guy like that that had a horrific injury, made his way back and now is in a World Cup. Uh, he reminds me a lot of John de Villiers, one of my idols, one of my favorite players um, ever guy that was set back really badly and just made his way back into it by a lot of hard work and effort. Jacobson, after amazing year this year, he's going to the Rugby World Cup. Reed, another guy in the team going for the treble and then Savea and Todd. Scrum halves, they are just like South Africa going with three options. It is actually interesting, most, most teams actually just go with two options. So. Maybe this makes me feel a little bit better as a South African because if the All Blacks are doing it, then way to go, then do that. If the All Blacks are going with three scrum offs, do that as well. Paranara is in the side, Smith and then Weber, he is in there as the third choice. Then fly halves or the first five, eight, there's only two guys going. It's Bowden Barrett, he would probably 
be playing at the fullback and then Mahunga. Playing both at the same time is a bit risky though because one of them do run a risk of getting an injury easier than the other one. Josh Ayoani will probably be on the phone waiting for that call up if anything happens. Hopefully for the All Blacks, not both of them, but he will be waiting at home. Inside centers or the second 5-8, we have Crotty. He's been chosen even though he's had some injury problems and he's still fighting his way back from that. Anton Leonard Brown, he, of course he's there, he's been good. And then Sonny Bill Williams, he's the oldest player in the side, being 34 years old. Um, and his game against the Wallabies, he, I think that is a game that really made Hansen's choice a little bit easier. He just had a very good game. And just showed everyone what he can still do. And he's the third player in the side going for the treble. That means, of course, no Lao Mape in the side. Uh, he's just a tackle bust. And it's very difficult to tackle him. And I would have preferred him maybe over Sunny Ball. But that versatility and that experience and also his ability just to offload the ball is just a lot better than... Laumape, so that veteran could bring a lot more to the to the table. Outside center, it's good you. He's the only specialist number 13 in the side. Anton Leonard Brown, he could probably cover the role though, but I would prefer prefer him at number 12. What I've seen of him at number 13 hasn't been great, but then you also have to remember the other day when the All Blacks wasted the Wallabies, he was at 13. Outside backs, they went with Jordi Barrett Bridge. Uh, to be honest, a couple of months ago, I wouldn't have thought that he would make the Rugby World Cup. Last year, I probably thought he was playing better rugby than this year. Uh, and he did not make the side, but now he is actually in the World Cup side. And he is playing well, though. Don't, don't get me wrong there. Rico Iowani not, doing his, uh, not playing his best rugby at the moment. Sevo Reese, he's probably the only try machine in the side at the moment. And then Ben Smith, another veteran in the side. Uh, he's had some injury troubles this season and he's not in the best of forms. So the side has three players going for the treble. Nine players won the World Cup last year, uh, last time in 2015. And then 19 players are making their World Cup debut. That is quite a high amount of players. Eight players are over the age of 30, making the side quite old actually. And they are in Pool B, playing against South Africa, Italy, Namibia and Canada. So South Africa and New Zealand, like I've said previously, are favourites for the pool. Um, the first game they are playing is against South Africa on 21 September. So all the games from there could just go easier uh, till you get into the playoffs. Um, and it will be a battle for that first place in the pool against South Africa because whoever loses that first one will be second place. New Zealand is probably the favourites to win the World Cup though. Uh, that's just my opinion. That's probably most people's opinion. It doesn't matter how the rankings look at the moment. Uh, but you might might disagree with me. Let me know down in your comments below who do you think is going to win this World Cup or who do you think might surprise us. And please remember the video I am doing next week with Imbiber. If you did like this video, guys, please hit that like button and hit the subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. And then check out some of my other videos. Cheers.